Hello, good day. You're welcome to my channel. It's good to have you here. If you're here for the very first time, please go ahead and just hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and just subscribe to the channel right away. I believe that there's content, you know, for everyone that comes to this channel. We have, we're doing a book reading challenge this month and there are different books that we're reading. Next month, we'll pick another set of books. So please just join in. There's something for you. Go ahead and subscribe if you are yet to do so. Today, we're reading the Art of Prayer. We're on day four and chapter four of the book, The Art of Prayer by Kennedy again. Here is my own copy of the book. You can go ahead and get your own copy. But what we're doing here is to make ourselves go through the book in the next 30 days so that um, we can know more about prayer and so that we can have more effective um, um, prayers. So today we're on chapter four, Intercession Defined. The purpose of defining intercession or any other kind of prayer is not to limit or confine prayer to a set of rules and regulations, but to give a better understanding of what the Bible teaches about each type of prayer. Equipped with such knowledge, the believer can cooperate more fully with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit always works in conjunction with the Word. Many people have lost the true spirit of prayer by becoming legalistic and clinical in their praying. It's more important to recognize and learn to flow with the Holy Spirit in prayer than merely to know correct prayer terminology. So the essence of this is not to feed our heads. The essence of this is to have a better understanding so that we can align with the Holy Ghost as we pray. For a long time, almost all prayer was called intercession, or it was thought that intercession was the only effective kind of praying. But in reality, the most effective prayer is the prayer the Holy Spirit inspires, wow, which is needed at the moment. So whatever kind of prayer it is, that prayer that is inspired by the Holy Ghost, you know, is the best kind of prayer. So whether it's the prayer of agreement, whether it's a prayer of faith, whether it's a prayer of praise and worship, or some other kind of prayer, often different kinds of prayer will work together, much, much like the fingers on a hand. You know, we all know that our fingers work together, right? Okay, these are my own fingers. For instance, supplication, which is an earnest, heartfelt request, is also used in intercession. Briefly defined, intercession is standing in the gap in prayer between a person or persons who have provoked judgment upon themselves through their wrongdoing and the actual execution of that judgment. Or to put it more simply, intercession is prayer to hold back judgment. To be effective, intercession needs to be made at the prompting of and under the direction of the Holy Spirit. So we can better understand intercession. Let's examine some instances in scripture when intercession was made. In Genesis 18 verses 16 to 33, that's a long read, so just um, tighten your seatbelt, okay? And the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. Wow. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is common to me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there will be fifty righteous within the city, without also destroy and not spare the righteous, for the fifty righteous that are therein. That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Wow. I mean, the righteous can preserve a city. Hmm. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon myself to speak unto the Lord 
which am but dust and ashes. Paradventure there shall be lack five of the fifty righteous. Will thou destroy all the city for the lack of five? And he said, if I find forty, forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again and said, Paradventure there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for forty sake. And he said unto the Lord, Oh, let not the Lord be angry and I will speak. Paradventure there shall be thirty there shall 30 be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there shall be 20 found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 20 sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure 10 shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 10 sake. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communion with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. Abraham's prayer for Sodom and Gomorrah is a clear example of the prayer of intercession. There is an important thing we need to know from this biblical account. God mentions a cry that arose from Sodom and Gomorrah in verses 20 and 21. Smith Wigglesworth said once that there's something about faith. That will cause God to pass over a million people just to get to one person who is in faith. You see, the cry of faith will bring God on the scene. The cry of faith invokes a blessing. The word invokes means to call forth, to put into operation or to bring about. To call forth, to, to provoke, to put into an operation. To bring about. But sin also cries out to God and brings him on the scene. Rather than invoking God, sin provokes God. The word provoke means to incite to anger, to call forth, to bring on, and to stare on purpose. Sin provokes God and calls forth wrath and judgment. Wrath and judgment. Time and again in scripture, we read where Israel provoked God to anger and judgment came. God does not delight in seeing people receive judgment. According to Micah 7, 18, God delights in mercy. God delight in mercy. Micah 7 verse 18 says, Who is a God like unto thee, that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retains not his anger forever, because he delights in mercy. Ezekiel 33 verse 11, Say unto them as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? However, if the ones who have sinned and provoked judgment upon themselves do not turn and repent, the, ho the only hope for judgment to be averted is for someone to stand in the gap for them and make intercession. That is why it's so important to intercede. Ezekiel 22 verses 30 and 31, it says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the edge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, just like Abraham did. But I found none. Therefore have I poured out my indignation upon them, I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, says the Lord God. In these verses, we can see that God himself sought for someone to stand in the gap for the land. But when no one was found, judgment was poured out. It is important to notice, that, to notice what God's will was in this matter. God's will was that someone stand in the gap so that the land should not be destroyed, would not be destroyed. We need to equip ourselves with an understanding of God's will. And when we go before him to make we need to keep us equip ourselves with an understanding of God's will when we go before him to make intercession on behalf of others. Sorry about that. God's highest and best is that people turn to him and live. Second hmm. Peter chapter 3, verse 9. <clears throat> Father enforces God's will concerning all men. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness. But is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. There were two occasions where Moses had to stand in the gap or make hedge or make intercession for the children of Israel who had provoked God by their idolatry and sin. In Numbers 14, verses 11 to 19, and the Lord said unto Moses, How long will these people provoke me? And how long will it be here they believe me for all the signs which I've showed among them? And I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them. And I will make of thee a greater nation. 
and mightier than they. And Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it. For thou brought them up, these people, in thy might from among them. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of the land. For they have heard that thou, Lord, art among those people. And thou, Lord, hast seen face to face. And that thy cloud stands over them. And that you go before them. By daytime in the pillar of cloud and in the pillar of fire by night. Now, if thou shalt kill all the people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, uh -huh. Because the Lord was not able to bring these people into the land which he swore to them, he has slain them in the wilderness. So Moses said, Now I beseech you, let the power of my Lord be great according as he has spoken, saying, The Lord is long suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression. And by no means claiming the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations. Pardon, I beseech you, the iniquity of these people, according to the greatness of your mercy. And as thou hast forgiven these people from Egypt even until now. Exodus 32, verses 7 to 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go thee down for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. So the one we read... Um, the last passage I read before this, you know, that was an example of Moses interceding for the people. And here in Exodus 32, this is another um, intercession going on here. So I'll repeat, I'll start all over again. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go thee down for thy people which thou brought out of the land of, land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made a molten calf and have worshipped it. Wow. And have sacrificed thereunto and said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen these people. I have seen these people, and behold, it's a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax out against, me, against them, that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does your wrath wax out again? It wax out hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did they bring them out, to slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your first wrath and repent of this evil against your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thy own self. And said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And all this land I have spoken of will I give unto your seed. And they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil, which he taught to do unto his people. Psalm 106 gives further insight into the importance of Moses' intercession prayers in withholding, in withholding judgment from the children of Israel. Note especially verse 23. Therefore he said, that Samuel 6 verse 23, Therefore he said that he would destroy them. Had not Moses his chosen stood before him in the bridge to turn away his wrath, lest he should destroy them. We can see from this verse that if Moses had not stood in the gap for Israel, they would surely have been destroyed in judgment. However, the most precious and outstanding example of an intercessor is our Lord Jesus who stood in the gap for us and now intercedes for us in the Father's right hand. In the next two chapters, we will look at his intercessory role on our behalf. I mean, Jesus is praying for you and me. Awesome. I can't wait to get into the next two chapters so that I can know more about the intercessory ministry of Jesus Christ. But as we were reading, I think from one of the intercessions of um, Moses, I feel like we should just take a few minutes to um, pray for Nigeria. If you can pray in other tongues, can you just pray in the Holy Ghost with me? Malege handa bosha katanda ri ala la bosha kwe handa ri ala la bosha. Zelebra haya la la bosha kwe handa ri ala la bosha kwe handa ri ala la bosha katanda ri ala la kalasha katanda. Lebra kaso toma katanda ri ala la bosha kwe handa ri ala la bosha katanda ri ala la basha. Zelebra haya la la bosha kwe handa ri ala la bosha katanda ri ala la bosha. Lege hamba ba 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 ba. Yebra haya la la bosha katanda ri ala la bosha. Malaka santa ri ala la bosha kwe handa ri ala la bosha katanda ri ala la bosha. That's from Numbers 14. I want to read from um, verse 17, and I was just going to speak that over the nation Nigeria, and 
you can speak over your city, you know, depending on where you're watching this video from. It says, and now I beseech you, let the power of my Lord be great according as he has spoken, saying, the Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech you, that's key, the iniquity of this people, according to the greatness of your mercy, and as you have forgiven this people from Egypt on, up until now. I want us to just pray for your city, pray for your city, pray for your nation. I'm in Nigeria right now. I just yield myself, Holy Spirit of God, to pray for the mercy of God over the nation. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that you pardon the iniquity of this nation, pardon the iniquity of the leaders, pardon the iniquity of the followers. Have mercy upon us as a people. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your mercy be great. In the name of Jesus Christ, have mercy upon this nation according to the greatness of your mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, and forgive us of all our iniquities. Holy Spirit of God, help me to pray this out in the name of Jesus Christ. If you don't pray in the Holy Ghost, just go ahead and pray in your understanding. All we are saying is, Lord, have mercy upon Nigeria. Have mercy upon the U.S. Have mercy upon America. Have mercy upon U.K. Wherever you're, you're watching from, just take a few minutes. Lord, have mercy upon the people within my city. In the name of Jesus, within my country. In the name of Jesus, forgive us all our iniquities. Pardon us, Lord. According to the greatness of your mercy. Because you're a good Lord and we know it's not it's not your will that any should perish, but that the sinner should come to repentance. We pray for the saved in our city. In the name of Jesus, we pray for their salvation. We pray for their repentance. That they will turn to the Lord. Repent of their wicked ways. And you will have mercy upon them and receive them as your own. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. See you tomorrow as we go on to chapter 5. Thank you. God bless you. It's a 26 day journey, but on day 5, we're moving. Thank you so much. And once again, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, share this, um, share the link, invite other people, share within your network. God bless you. Do have a beautiful day and watch out for that content on the channel. Thank you.